Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording. We are finishing up our mix bus processing series today. I'm gonna show you how to use multi-band compression on your mix bus. We're looking at multi-band compression on the mix bus today, but before we dive in, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and look at multi-band compression on the mix bus. Now multi-band compression can be sort of a tricky thing, especially on the mix bus and at the beginning of the mix here. I have used it before and I used it for quite a while. It was just part of my mix bus chain when I pulled in my template. It was console shaper, mix bus compressor, multi-band compressor. That was my chain for a while. I kind of swapped it out for the tape machine. I've used both sometimes, but I've kind of bumped the multi-band compressor to the mastering chain when I need it. It's something you only want to pull in if you need it and you want to be conscious as you A-B it to see if it's really helping the mix. So, so far here, we've got our console shaper in, we got our mix bus compressor in, we got our tape machine in, and then we went back and did a little bit of EQ, a little bit of shaping on the mix as a whole. Our tracks are pulled up here. Nothing is on our tracks yet, so these are raw recorded tracks. We're just getting our mix going here with our mix bus processing. Next thing we're gonna pull in here, the last thing we're gonna pull in is a multi-band compressor. Now this is, I'm, I'm gonna put this below our mix bus compressor. So we're following our mix bus compressor with it, but it's before our tape machine. I like to keep the tape machine at the end because then it simulates right your mix is going out and hitting tape. There's nothing after the tape machine, that's the end of the line there. I'm gonna keep it bypassed here for a second. I'm gonna play you where our mix is currently standing here with the console shaper, mix bus compressor, tape machine, and our EQ in. You can hear it's quite the difference there with these few plugins. That's what I like so much about mix bus processing. You can get your mix so much closer to being polished and to being finished by just doing some processing on the mix bus. And that is the benefit of recording your tracks really well. Okay, moving in here, multi-band compression. This is something, like I said, you wanna be careful about putting on at the beginning of the mix because you gotta realize, you gotta keep in mind that your entire mix is running through this. So if you do boost up a specific range inside your mix, maybe you sweep it up to try and find a bad frequency or something that's ringing out, you gotta keep in mind you're pushing into this multi-band. So it's gonna clamp down on that boost as you push up. So it can change how you're EQing things very, very quickly. If you're gonna put this in at the beginning of your mix, you gotta be conscious of that and you gotta be careful about that. Now the other way you could do this is throw this in on your mix bus at the end of your mix. So you get all this other stuff in, your console shaper, your compressor, tape machine, your EQ, then you go back, you do your entire mix, and then you come to the end and you throw the multiband on at the end for a final bit of shaping here. I'm gonna show you the settings here at the beginning and you'll hear what it does to our mix. But just keep in mind, you wanna be careful about when you do it here. So I do have a setting here on the multi-band compressor called Mix Bus. Like I said, I did use this for quite a while on my Mix Bus and it was in at the beginning of my mix session there. I mixed through it just like the Mix Bus compressor here. So it's broken up into three bands here. Our low band is zero to 160 hertz. So everything below 160 here. Next band is 160 hertz to 2.5K. So pretty much our mid range there. And then we get our top end frequencies above 2.5K. So it splits it into nice three even bands. You can take care of your low end, your mid range, and your top end. I like to keep it that simple here. And this is, this is a multi-band setting I took from Joe Gilder, who I believe took it from Ian Shepard, uh, a famous mastering engineer. 
So let's go through the settings here. Uh, the settings are the same on all three bands here. You can see edit relative is on. So we pull the threshold down on all of them at the same time. So ratio is at two to one here. So very, very gentle on all three bands. We wanna be as gentle as possible because again, same way with our mix bus compressor, we are affecting the entire mix here. Attack and release settings are both set at 100. Very, very gentle attack. A nice, gentle or medium style release here. We wanna make sure our release lets go in time for the next hit, whether it be the kick hit or the snare hit or whatever inside of our mix. But our attack is very, very slow, so we're very gentle on the entire mix, especially on the low end here. Excuse me. When you're compressing low end, you wanna be gentle with your attack. Same way we were on our mix bus compressor, right? We went all the way up to 30 milliseconds with our attack. We're being even gentler here, going up to 100 milliseconds to preserve all the transients, all the attack, and all the energy inside our mix here. Now, this comes up at negative 20, which is where I, I kept it when it was in on my mix bus. I left it there at 20, and like I said, I mixed through it. We're gonna start here at 20, and we'll pull it down, we'll pull it back, and kind of get it set where we want it inside the mix here. So we'll start without it, and then I'm gonna kick it in here. You can hear and see on the different bands here, I'll go through each band, how much compression is happening, and what it does tonally and balance-wise to our mix. So without, and then with. You can hear that's pretty compressed sounding because of all the stuff we have beforehand now, the console shaper, our EQ, and our mix bus compressor, making things quite quite a bit more aggressive going into the multiband here. So we'll have to pull it back a little bit. But visually, you can see we're getting the most compression on our low end and our mid-range band here, which inevitably, right, hypes our top end. Let's tweak the compressor here a little bit and pull back our low, our, our threshold here on all three bands to get it sitting a little bit gentler. We're doing quite a bit of compression on, on our low and mid-range band here and, and overall. We don't wanna be that aggressive, especially on our mix bus here. Let's pull it back and maybe sit maybe 3 dB compression or something. <laughs> Right there is where I'm liking it. We're back at negative 17, so we went about 3 dB back from our negative 20 threshold. Doing just a touch of compression, you can see it's happening mainly on our low end and our mid range there. Not getting much compression, if any, on our top end. So it hypes up our top end a little bit, and we get that sense of clarity and air across our mix here. Let me AB it one more time. Pay attention to how our mix changes, both our low end and our mid range getting that compression and our top end not getting that compression. I'll leave this in on stereo here. So I'll start without it and then I'll kick it in. You can hear how things change.
The multiband compressor helps to tuck things into the mix. I'm gonna play it one more time and listen to our snare drum especially. You can hear when we kick the multiband in, it tucks our snare drum into the mix so it doesn't feel like it's jumping way out front every time our snare drum hits. It keeps it even and tucked inside the mix. That's why you have to be careful when you put it on your mix bus like this, especially at the beginning of the mix, because anything you boost up across your mix, frequency wise or volume wise, is gonna get clamped down upon by the multiband. That's why, what if I do put it on now, I do put it at the end of the mix. Like I said, I used to do it like this and, and I got good mixes, I got good results with it. You just have to keep it in mind while you're going through your mix, okay? There's something on my mix bus that's holding things in place. So bear that in mind as you're boosting across your mix. Anything you boost is gonna push into this multiband and shift your frequency balance across your mix. Just gotta keep that in mind. So listen one more time here how it holds our snare drum in place. And you'll see it's mainly working on our snare drum here in the mid range. So it's gonna tuck our snare drum into the mix without and then with. Pay attention to how our snare drum changes. I like what it's doing to our track, especially on the snare drum, it's holding it in place, but overall, it helps the track feel that much more polished and that much more finished sounding. When I kick it in, it feels like, it feels like a song rather than a bunch of different elements. It's doing that same kind of thing that our mix bus compressor is doing, but on three different bands. So it does it for our low end, does it for our mid range, and it does it for our top end. We get that extra bump in our top end, so that extra sense of air, and it controls our mid range in our low end, which I really, really like. I'm not crazy about how much it's working on the low end, and I probably wouldn't keep it in here at the beginning of the mix. This is something I would throw in at the end here, especially on a track like this, and we don't even have our vocals in yet, right? We just have the instrumental built. You have to be very careful and very weary of this. So one more time here, we'll A-B this, and then I'll A-B all of our mix bus processing so far. Keep in mind here as we A-B, the multiband, how it's controlling the mix and keeping things balanced and polished overall. We'll start with this time and then I'll take it out and kick it back in here. Kind of that element of automatic balancing for you. Pulls up the top end, controls the mid range and the low end here on the multiband. Very, very gentle, doing about 3 dB compression overall across the bands. That's where you wanna keep it. You don't wanna go too far, otherwise you work really hard on your low end and your mid range here. Let me AB everything now here. We got a lot going on on our mix bus here. So I'll take everything out and then we'll go one by one adding everything back in. We'll do it in the order we added it inside uh, the mix here. So we'll start with everything, take it out, and then add them in piece by piece here. You can hear how far we've come with just the mix bus processing. <laughs> Quite the difference. It, pulling all these plugins off, it's a night and day difference. Takes it from feeling like raw recorded tracks, like a raw demo, to pretty much sounding like a finished instrumental mix here. That's what you want. That's the idea with mix bus processing, is getting you so much closer to the finish line, just doing work on the mix bus here. 
First thing we added, our console shaper is giving us that element of depth to help our mix feel not so digital, right? Then coming down to our mix bus compressor, that's gluing everything together, helping it feel not like a bunch of separated tracks, not a bunch of individual tracks, helping it feel like one cohesive song. Then we come down and we add in our tape machine. That's helping to enhance our low end and a little bit on our top end, but mainly gives us that bump in our low end and hypes it so it feels like it's jumping out of the speakers at you. That's that analog vibe coming from a tape machine. Then we came back, just a touch of shaping, just kissing some of these, right? Half dB and dB moves here on our EQ to take it that much further, getting rid of some of that muddiness, bump in the low end, bump in the top end, bump in the mid range there. And the final thing we added was our multiband dynamics or our multiband compressor, giving us that extra element of control, but frequency specific. To can rein in these different ra frequency ranges that are jumping out and maybe bring up some that aren't jumping out so much. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video.